Welcome to Sam's Di- What can I do for you, Mr. Black's Hat? What can you tell me about Sonia Dunn? I barely know her, but she looks like a smart girl, poor thing. Any ideas where Bobby Yale could be? How... how am I supposed to know? He's rarely there when I clean the gym. Bobby seems like a nice kid, but I... I barely know him. What do you think about Jake Ostiambi? Who? Who's that? A big gorilla. Boxer, too. A friend of Joe Dunn's. Oh, yeah. I barely know him. I don't like how he looks at me. Can I ask you about your job? Uh, which one? Tell me about your work here in the diner. Oh, it's wonderful. I love it. My boss. Oh, glad to hear that. How long have you worked at the gym? It's been, what, four or five years? Although, I don't think I'll be able to set foot in there again. This must be really hard for you. I'm sorry. Other than the diner and the gym, you don't work anywhere else, right? I wouldn't have the time, although I'm not sure I want to continue working at the gym. If I were you, I wouldn't quit. Trust me. It might be painful at first, but time heals all wounds. Joey used to say the same thing. Maybe. I don't know. Thanks. Let's talk a bit more about Joe Dunn. Can you tell me how you found Dunn's body? Well, I thought I was alone. I clean early in the morning before Mr. Dunn comes in. Oh, so you have keys to the gym? Yes, of course. There was paint on the floor, so I thought it'd be a busy morning. And then I saw him, hanging there, like a baby mobile over a crib. Then I think I panicked. When I calmed down, I called the police and waited outside. Sorry, that's all I can say. Don't worry. But if you remember anything else, let me know. What kind of boss was Joe Dunn? A good one. Always paid on time, never raised his voice. If I asked for the day off, he even cleaned the gym. How was Joe Dunn outside the gym? I wouldn't know. I only saw him at the gym or right there. That was his spot. I think everyone liked him. Thanks, but I still don't get why he'd commit suicide. Maybe he simply had money issues. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Could be. The gym didn't really get that dirty lately. His wife died years ago. Maybe he never got over it. Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe he did. That was a long time ago. I heard his relationship with his daughter wasn't ideal. Oh, really? Poor man. I don't have kids, but that has to be really hard. Can I have a hamburger, please? Oh, sure. Regular or cheese? I think I'll get the cheeseburger. Mm-hmm. You want fries? A drink? No, that's it. Okay. Is that for here or to go, then? To go, please. Mm -hmm. One cheeseburger to go, Sam. Okay. Smells like cinnamon. No, cinnamon and burgers.
They look puffy and tired. Sleepless nights? Hectic days? Or has she been crying? Perhaps all of the above. Her handwriting is nice and neat. Your burger is ready. you enjoy your meal. Four people used the back door that very same night. Huh? Well, I might be blind as a bat, but as you can certainly see, I have two wonderfully functional ears. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Thank you very much for remembering the cheese, by the way. <laughs> Four people used the back door two days ago? Yeah, that's right. <coughs> Who was the first person to use the back door? Someone big. Unlocked the door, stepped inside, <laughs> then came right back out. Who was the second person to use the back door? A man. Just a few minutes after the first person. He came back out muttering, Ungrateful bastard. Then, he threw something in the trash, and walked back in. Oh, no, wait. Before that, he gave me a coin. A coin? I mean, do I look like I need spare change, huh? I mean, I'm staying at the Million Star Hotel, for God's sake. <laughs> Who was the third person to use the back door? Judging by the quiet footsteps, I'd say it was someone small. I'd say it was about 30 minutes after the second person came out. Whoever it was threw something in the trash and stood in front of me for a moment. Then, I heard a click. And finally, I heard trailing laughter in that direction. Who was the fourth person to use the back door? Someone big. I recall heavy breathing. The person left in a hurry, running in that direction. Looks like someone used it as a punching ball. I wonder what it's like to be blind. Would I cope? Could he have been a train conductor?
blind and legless. How does he get by? There's a chest expander in your cart. A what expander? A thingamajig with three springs. Oh, the thingamajig with springs. Oh, I, I got it from the trash back there. Where did you get that paint can? In the trash can in the back. A paint can and a thingamajig with springs. What a night. You were acting a bit strange before, but now you seem fine. Why is that? Hey, you got great vision, sense of smell, and hearing. Why is that? Well, I'm a cat. Well, I'm a goat. That's all for now. Thanks. are you in? This much. The chest expander in the trash belongs to Yale. Arthur Tucker painted the racial slur on Yale's locker. You're going to like what I have to tell you about the Dunn case. I went to Yale's place and ran into O'Leary's men. They were waiting for him. Ah, well, it's only normal. They run an illegal gambling operation. If a fight's canceled, they lose money. I'd love to take a swing at O'Leary, but we can't base the case on a hunch. I'm not finished yet. You're going to like what I have to tell you about the Dunn case. A close friend of Don's works for O'Leary. You mean that gorilla? Your ex's bodyguard? We know. O'Leary is a respectable citizen. Until we prove otherwise. So there's nothing wrong with him hiring a bodyguard. Hmm. I think that's it. Okay, Jake. I told you! Desmond O'Leary. Huh? I know you work for him. Now you're just making stuff up. Why would you say that? O'Leary's men told me a while ago. Okay. Let's say you're right. So what? What are you gonna do, huh?
I could tell your friend Sonia. Does she know? Don't you dare. All right. You win, pussycat. Business isn't going that well lately. Natalia was my last well-paying job. And it's been a while. Then... O'Leary shows up and offers me a, 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 a bodyguard contract. What was I supposed to do? You could have said no. Yeah, like you never take uh, shady business. I'd never take a job like that. Hey, uh, O'Leary might run an illegal gambling operation, but it's not like he's killing people or conning widows. And I, I'm just a bodyguard. I make sure no one gets hurt. What I do, including my contract and paycheck, is 100% legal. How bad can that be? O'Leary pays you with dirty money and you're part of a criminal organization. There's no two ways about it, but that's not what bothers me. I know you're covering up O'Leary's role in Joe Dunn's death. Huh? O'Leary? No way. I mean, I don't think so. Jake, please. Well, I guess there's no point in hiding it now. I was here the day Dunn died. Go on. I had to take care of some business for O'Leary. He makes me wear the shamrock when I work for him. As you know, I left the damn thing in my locker. Say no more. You came in the back door. How did you... Yeah, that's it. Joe had mentioned he'd been painting that afternoon, but I forgot. I stopped in my tracks when I saw him screaming bloody murder at Bobby Hill at the top of the scaffold. What exactly was he saying? Uh, something like, uh, if you do that, I'll call off the fight and make sure you never set foot in this gym again. I didn't want them to see me, so I left. Jake, why didn't you tell me? See, I knew you'd be mad. Obviously. I'm sorry, John. I, I should have said something. Don't worry. We all make mistakes. Time to go. I need to think about everything you just told me. Thanks, John. Thank you, Mr. Blacksad. Does the postman always leave your mail on the floor? I don't know. I... I... What's wrong? It's... It's my mother's wedding ring. Who had it? I don't know. My father wore it on his pinky finger after she died. Not always, apparently. Will you find out why? Sure. But there's something else I'm worried about. This might have something to do with the... Bobby Yale's disappearance. Oh. Oh my, yes. It could be.
nice and steady heartbeat. Big, bright eyes. Looks well rested. Either she didn't mourn her father, or she really knows how to work that makeup. What the? What's wrong? Someone's taking pictures from the rooftop. Are you sure? I'll go take a look. Now, who's that rope for, Miss Dunn? Mm. Weekly. Ah, 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 What the hell are you doing here? Uh, oh. <laughs> hey, hey, look! Isn't that Cassidy? <laughs> Don't change the subject, you sad little... Why don't we settle this over ice cream, huh, John? Just like in the good old days. <laughs> How did you get up here? Uh, uh, I don't want anyone to see you. Everyone, even the most hapless of creatures, has a gift. Something that makes them special, that makes them worth knowing. Foul-smelling Weekly is no exception. No matter what he does, it's impossible to stay mad at him for too long. Mmm. Ah, this bourbon shake is delicious. Want a taste? You know I don't like milk. Your loss. So, Joe Dunn hangs himself leaves his gym to his daughter, which makes her the first woman to run a boxing gym, I think. The real question is, why did he commit suicide? Well, it's pretty obvious. Is that so? Care to shed some light on this, Sherlock? Well, there's no need to look for reasons. People hang themselves every day out of sadness. And stuff like that. End of story. Everyone knows that Jim had some serious money issues. Maybe he just got tired of fighting. Well, it doesn't really matter. It's just a hunch. I wouldn't bet my life on it. I've got other suspects, like O'Leary, the bookmaker. Desmond O'Leary? The same O'Leary who used to date Helen Moore? America's sweetheart? Now that's a woman. And then there's the walls. Who was that guy? Come on. You've never heard of Frank Cassidy? The president of the Boxing Managers Association? Who's also Stone's agent, Bobby Yale's rival. Hmm. He might know why Dunn killed himself, right? I decided to ask Weekly to investigate Cassidy. My reasons? Weekly was right. Cassidy could have known why Dunn killed himself. Weekly had already proven to be nosy. The farther I kept him from the gym, the better. But with Weekly, you just never know what the best approach might be. Should I give him an order or a subtle suggestion? Yeah, you might be right about Cassidy. But, hmm, it won't be easy to make him talk. He seems like a pretty tough cookie. Only a thorough and efficient detective could pull it off. But the problem is, I already got enough on my plate. You're a lucky man, John Black said. I don't follow. You just found the thorough detective you need. Oh, of course. What a great idea. How did I not think of you? Hey, don't sweat it. But you'll have to do me a favor. Tell Sonya Dunn that a legendary journalist from What's News wants an interview. 
Weekly, please. Well, if not, bye-bye, Cassidy. You know, there's a third option. What if I tell Sonya to sue you for spying on her? You wouldn't. <laughs> Try me. Okay, you win. By the way, I never told you what happened to Colbert, did I? No. What happened? The rhinoceros came by and offered me money to keep quiet. Wow. Are we talking petty cash or big bucks? The latter. That's my boy. Good job, Black Sad. Half the money is yours. Yeehaw! So, was there really someone on the roof? No one. I must be seeing things. A hallucinating detective. This must be my lucky day. <laughs> <laughs>